All right, people, time for school again. I'm going to use a different camera today, so we'll see if this works a little bit better than what I had yesterday. Whoa, that wasn't a good start. Let's try again. Hmm. No, let's see. So how are you guys doing? I hope everybody's well. I uh, hope you're social distancing. Um, we're continuing our book, America. Now, it should look backwards to you because I'm using the front side of the camera on my phone and uh, that's the way it's going to be. I guess that'll be alright because you can't see what I'm reading anyway. Um, Yesterday we read through the philosophical roots of American democracy, Plato, John Locke, uh, Machiavelli, I can't say his name, and Christ. Uh, we had political philosophies of each of those individuals as uh, part of the roots of our democracy. And today, uh, we're stepping beyond the Magna Carta and the roots and we're going to go to the founding of America. Uh, this chapter begins with a quote from, who is that fellow? George Washington. Uh, it says, Jefferson, you're on two. Hamilton, you get the ten. I'm calling dibs on the one. That's all me, baby. What's that, Adams? You wanted the one? All right. That's it. You don't get to be on anything. That's right. I'm taking back the quarter. Anyone else want to complain? I don't think so. So that was uh, George Washington uh, telling people what denomination of bills they would be on. Uh, that's in jest, but it's, it's funny, and it is something to think about. So you, you, you could consider, uh, you know, looking at uh, your, 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 your bills and, and knowing who is on what, and it's kind of, um, kind of funny, I guess. Um, the Founding of America, Chapter 2. It had been hundreds of thousands of years since man first made his presence felt on planet Earth, but it had been time well spent. Our species' progress had been steady but slow. Man had survived, but with precious little to show for his time. A, frust a frustration summed up in the famous cave drawing entitled Enough Already, with the hunting and gathering. Of course, there had been great accomplishments along the way. Fire was a winner. Walk walking upright went a, a long way towards easing back pain. Even the wheel, the boat, and language would prove quite useful, especially on the heels of the less successful parallelogram, rock and grunting. All wonderful innovations that would, in their own tiny way, advance the cause of man. But nothing yet accomplished would rival in importance the discovery, colonization, and eventual democratization of the New World. Yes, America would become what the... Tocqueville described as the total package. America's journey from undiscovered frontier to independent nation to transcendently perfect beacon of freedom was long, complex, and fascinating. But to fully understand the journey, you only have to memorize three dates. I wonder what those three dates are. 1492, okay, we know. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue and discovered America. Now, some have argued Columbus actually discovered the West Indies or that Norsemen had discovered America centuries earlier or that you really can't get credit for discovering a land already populated by indigenous people with a developed civilization. 
those people are communists. Columbus discovered America. <laughs> so uh, he's making fun of that. He's saying that it's not it's un-American to say that someone other than Columbus discovered America. And he's in jest because there are some complaints about that. America's path to democracy was cleared by the colonists' generous giveaways, like the much sought after smallpox blankets. And that's really not funny in light of what's happening in the world today. But. And you know the story about the smallpox blankets that, in order to uh, kill off the indigenous people, they gave them blankets that had smallpox nasty on it and and caused more people to die than would have like 90 percent of the indigenous people on uh, this in north america and south america died as a reason well in north america in south america it was probably a little less but uh, 90 percent of the people in north america died as a result of uh of, uh, of diseases the next great date uh, in the history of American democracy uh, mark the Pilgrims' establishment of the first successful New World colony, and that's in 1620. So they're, they're forgetting about Jamestown, but that's okay. Uh, so uh, the way that they said it, in 1602-0, the Pilgrims landed dressed real weird. <laughs> They didn't say weird, but I'm not going to. Uh, so 1620. So this is 2020. So that would have been 400 years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Um, now, some have argued the first established colony was actually the ill-fated Roanoke colony or the slightly better-fated Jamestown colony. That's what I was talking about. Those people are mentally ill. <laughs> so he doesn't think you should think that. Roanoke and Jamestown do not count because both settlements lack the key ingredient necessary for the successful colonization of America. Religious fanaticism. Uh, Plymouth succeeded because its inhabitants did not come to the New World searching for glory, adventure, or hot man in on Indian action. Rather, the pilgrims had come to escape religious persecution to create a society where they could worship as they pleased and one day god willing even do some uh persecuting of their own said john winthrop the first elected leader of the plymouth colony in england we are looked upon crossly for what they deem our most unusual form of puritan orthodoxy well, I say unto those who gaze, he deemed disapprovingly, you call that persecution, dirty looks, watch, as I have uh, this person burned alive for having hiccups. So they were talking about the witch trials. For almost 400 years after the foundation of the Puritans Plymouth Colony, the state of Massachusetts became the first to guarantee the constitutionality of gay marriage. This act was misconstrued as a bold move forward in the cause of equality, but in reality was just a hilarious uh, jab at the pilgrims. Yeah, I don't think it's funny at all. In 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed. Okay, so that's the third date. So we got the dates. We got 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Then we got 1620. The pilgrims uh, landed dressed strangely on Plymouth Rock. And in 1776, uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed. I still think that they should have mentioned a little bit more about Jamestown because I used to live near there. It's very close to here. Finally, the date of destiny. July 4th, 1776, the day America officially broke with England. The day brave patriots signed a document stating, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The day most historians refer to as democracy's money shot, whatever that means. 
but our journey to independence in inexorable or had it been as some have claimed ex exorbable consider this remarkable fact the united states of america the greatest country in the history of the world would not exist had england simply been less stingy with its chamomile with the chamomile um okay I know that I, I, I've, I've used chamomile tea. It's very nice. It's um, very calming. I'm not sure what they mean by that, but uh, we'll go on. Prelude to Revolution. You can't spell tyranny without tea. <laughs> That's hilarious. Though through most of colonial history, inhabitants of the 13 colonies were loyal subjects to of the British crown, resourceful, dedicated, and as the third Duchess of Kent was found of saying, some tea-drinking uh, people, in fact, whenever the subject of the New World was mentioned within earshot, the Duchess would always be counted on for a wistful head shake and a hearty love the tea. Yes, tea was not just a hot beverage in late 18th century America, it was the hot beverage. So it came as quite a shock to colonists when in... Uh-oh. Here's our unelectable founders. I don't know what they mean by that, and I'm sure that you're looking at it backwards. So if you freeze the frame, you can get yourself a headache by studying this for me. Thank you. In 1773, the British government outsourced all American tea jobs to the East India Company, an offshore British multinational. So they're making fun of how economies work today. In addition, the Crown <clears throat> passed the Tea Act, raising the tariff on tea one-eighth pence per dram, the modern equivalent of $5,000 per tea bag. They're kidding. But the English-American relationship had been deteriorating for some time. In 1765, King George III imposed the Stamp Act, which in conjunction with the Equality, Equally Harsh Coin Act and Action Figure Act <laughs> decimated colonial, colonial America's burgeoning nerd community. The uh, anger was soon given a voice by Pennsylvania, Pennsylvanian John Dickinson, who eloquently argued for greater colonial self-government in his classic Letters from a Pennsylvania Farmer and its less, populated sequel, less popular sequel, The Pennsylvania Farmer and the Goblet of Fire. The first major act of violence occurred in 1770 when the British troops fired into an angry mob and killed five citizens in what became known as the Boston Massacre. Yes, it was a happier, simpler time when five deaths were seen as a massacre, not the natural consequence of, say, uh, a Detroit Pistons championship celebration. Hmm. But it was, in 1773, it was the 1773 Tea Act that proved the tipping point in America's uh, struggle for independence. The colonists gathered to, decline, to declare their next move. Inspiration came in the form of um, a New York-based Will Wright and lyricist who's the catchy slogan, No Taxation Without Representation, um, galvanized the populace and marked the birth of a great American political tradition. The reductionist rhyming chant, but the Tea Act required immediate action. There would be no out-of-town previews. There were only two weeks until opening night, people, two weeks. And so, on a cold December night, a party of Bostonians dressed as Mohawk Indians boarded ships anchored in the harbor and dumped thousands of pounds of tea into the Atlantic through do, though do. Okay. Um, here's the founding moms. Betsy Ross, Abigail Adams, Mary Hayes, uh, Molly Pitcher, 
and Sybil Ludington. Uh, you guys can look them up and read about them. I know this is backwards. You can freeze it and put it up to a mirror and then you can see it perfectly. So it's all on you. Um, we're getting there. Uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. If it had been sharpened to a fine point, dipped in deadly ooh, and thrown from ten feet away. But really, you're better off with the sword. Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard Almanac. Uh, first draft. Uh, to, to better than expected turnout, not everyone got to dress up as an Indian. British authorities immediately closed the harbor and clamped down on the Massachusetts government. A move... Uh, brewer patriot Sam Adams called Wicked Retha Dead, whatever that is. Uh, in ye Boston Globe, months later, the battles of Lexington and Concord would make reconciliation impossible. England and her colonial America would be forever separate. How it came to pass, perhaps no one summed it up more eloquently than the third. Duchess of Kent. Um, mess with tea and we'll get the... If you're, if you're going to sever ties with your commonwealth through bloody struggle, it is considered polite to write down why. Nobody wants to get three years into a revolution only to realize the whole thing was a was a threes company misunderstanding. Um, they're talking about a TV show. I don't want to go into it, but threes company, uh, never mind. The Declaration of Independence was a laundry list of grievances stating America's cause, case for freedom. Its accusations against the king ranged from he plundered, uh, he, he has plundered our seas, burnt our towns, ravaged the lives of our people, to the trifling, sometimes when he sees us at a party, he acts like he doesn't know us. <laughs> so they were really just saying that they didn't like anything about um, uh, King, the King. Um, he, he had an, enacted a multitude of new offices. The authors of the Declaration knew they would also have to appeal to man's higher nature to stir men's souls. They needed uh, something with more zazz. Entered a young hotshot tobacco executive from Virginia, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson had great success marketing tobacco. His task now would be to sync, synthesize the unique brand message of America down to something that would captivate the hard to reach. 12 to 28. Uh, age, uh, militia age demographic. Um, all the while not offending the traditional butter churn moms. His first attempt at a preamble was America. A is for all the tea they taxed. M is for the minute men they shellaxed. That was, that tested poorly, so he rewrote it as this. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's awesome. In a scant 35 words, Jefferson had given the nation the kind of positive brand identity that rendered moot the issue of whether or not he had to live up to its it, we had to live up to its ideals, still knowing the inherent contradiction between their noble words and the reality of a slave-owning nation. Jefferson and the founders wisely decided to strike from the Declaration of Independence the phrase "or your money back." <laughs> That's crazy. The Declaration of Independence was signed and announced on July fourth, seventeen seventy-six. A new nation was born. The founding fathers would now retire back to their respective states, knowing that all that was left to achieve was for their untrained militias to engage and defeat the most powerful empire the world had ever seen. Great. Okay, I'm going to stop there, even though I'm not quite finished with Chapter 2, because that's a good stopping point. 
and because I feel like uh, I, I want the, uh, this tape to be short enough that it will play for you on YouTube. Um, thank you all for listening. I miss all of you. I would call out your names, but there would probably be some legal ramifications for that. So you all have a good Tuesday, and uh, I hope that some of you actually get to watch this. Thanks. Bye.